Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about the interesting concept of adding arbitrary data to the Bitcoin blockchain. Now you may know that uh, of course transactions between parties are recorded on this database called the blockchain when you send money from one person to another. But it turns out you're actually able to add some other data to that chain too. So we're going to talk about the different components uh, that go into this and allow this to happen. So the first thing that we need to understand is the concept of Bitcoin scripts. When you create a transaction to send funds to somebody else on Bitcoin or a fork of Bitcoin, there's not simply a hard-coded uh, set of rules or steps that the Bitcoin protocol follows to ensure that that transaction is valid. Um, in fact, Bitcoin is programmable money. And so there are different ways in which a wallet can uh, construct a transaction in order for it to be considered valid. And the way that this is designed, there's actually a limited scripting language, appropriately called script, that executes when a transaction is confirmed and any uh, Bitcoin node can also uh, execute these transaction scripts to ensure that the transaction is indeed valid. And that's part of the decentralized nature of the Bitcoin protocol. So the important thing that you need to know to understand this concept at a high level and to understand uh, the ability to add arbitrary data to the blockchain, you need to understand uh, the important rule for a transaction script to be considered valid. In order for a transaction to be considered valid, when the script executes uh, with both the locking condition and the unlocking condition run together, uh, we must end up with true on the execution stack. So script is a stack-based language. Uh, data is pushed on and off of an execution stack as we go through the opcodes in the script. And a transaction is only considered valid if we end up with true uh, when that script execution is finished. So for example, in a typical pay to public key uh, script, that's kind of the normal transaction that you would see if you're just sending value to someone else. Uh, there's a signature and public key as part of the unlocking script constructed by the spender's wallet. And there's the uh, locking script, uh, which is a part of the original UTXO that the user is going to spend. And that has some opcodes that check that the owner is indeed the uh, valid true owner of those funds by checking this signature and public key. Now, if that's a little bit confusing, that's okay. I actually have an existing, more in-depth tutorial about uh, basic Bitcoin scripts that explains uh, pay to public key hash uh, in depth. But again, it's important to understand that if you are indeed the true owner of a UTXO uh, when you go to spend some Bitcoin, this script will evaluate to true when any node and any miner goes to validate that transaction. Now, let's talk about where this fits into adding arbitrary data to the blockchain. Bitcoin scripts have a really cool special operator called op return. And all this operator actually does is it causes the script to just automatically uh, validate to true when this operator is hit during execution. So you can have a script that simply has op return at the beginning of the script, which means that that transaction is automatically considered valid by nodes on the network. And after that script, you can include arbitrary data that will be recorded uh, as part of that transaction on the blockchain. So for example, I could use my wallet to construct a transaction and have my script be op return and Chaintoots teaches Bitcoin uh, encoded in that transaction. So that could be a way that I could forever record on the immutable, unchangeable blockchain that I really enjoy doing this. Now, there are some limits to the amount of data that you can store on the blockchain, and that's for economic and scaling reasons. Uh, we simply wouldn't want users, uh, any user on the network, to be able to store large 
gigantic files on the blockchain and kind of clog up the network with unnecessary data, but we still want to enable some really cool use cases for something like this. So Bitcoin BTC has a limit of 40 bytes for op return scripts. Bitcoin Cash BCH doubles that limit to 80 bytes, which keeps, uh, keeps things scalable, but does allow more interesting use cases than perhaps BTC would. Now BSV, uh, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, which is another fork that's out there, uh, really believes in allowing larger data to be included in the blockchain. So they allow 100 kilobytes or 100,000 bytes to be uh, included in those op return transactions. Now it is pretty cool that I could theoretically record on the blockchain that I love teaching you about Bitcoin. But what are some real interesting use cases of this ability to add arbitrary data to the blockchain? Well, by doing this, you can actually build applications beyond just sending value from one person to another in various ways. So two examples that I'll share are uh, used in Bitcoin Cash, the BCH blockchain. One is called memo.cash. And this is essentially a decentralized Twitter. It allows you to include small messages in Bitcoin Cash blocks. And that means that the messages that you send out, unlike Twitter, cannot be censored and they can never be changed. So you could maybe say something about a cause that you feel very strongly about, and that could never be censored because it's part of this overall decentralized and censorship resistant network of Bitcoin Cash. There's also another uh, use case that I think is really cool, which is tokenization. Uh, Bitcoin Cash has the SLP token standard, which allows you to create what are essentially new currencies or tokens representing other assets on top of Bitcoin Cash. And those are built using op return scripts. So I think it's really interesting to see some of these use cases that have popped up for including sort of arbitrary data on the blockchain that's not just transactions uh, of value between different parties. So again, if you'd like to understand Bitcoin scripts a little more in depth, I have an existing tutorial on that and a tutorial on segregated witness scripts for Bitcoin BTC available on the Chain Tutorials website. As always, there's a written article that accompanies this tutorial if you'd like to learn that way. And as always, I want to thank you very much for listening.